We have a wealth of tools available to us. Notebooks, handheld PDAs, smartphones. We've got applications and software, and we have the internet. All of these things should make us more productive and more efficient. Now, in some cases, this is true, but in many cases, we end up wallowing, getting a little taste of efficiency at one trough, and then moving on to another, and another trough after that, and never really settling in on a strategy that makes us truly efficient. Well, today, I thought we'd look at some of the different solutions. We're going to try and get a feel for them and see if I can help you come up with a game plan, a way to make it all work for you. So let's begin by talking about email, so important. And then we're going to progress through some of the other areas. There's several different types of internet mail services. And unfortunately for clarity, the lines between them are awfully blurry. The most common email technologies are pop mail and web-based mail. Pop mail is the type of account that you usually get from your internet service provider. It's a sort of a mail account that you need to configure in a mail client, like Outlook or Outlook Express, or the new Windows Mail. You use servers. You, you type in incoming mail server, outgoing mail server. Those servers, when you configure your software, are sort of internet post offices. Your mail comes into the server that knows that you have an account, and your mail is held there and forwarded to you when you log on. Let me show you my Pop mail account. If I go in my Tools menu in Outlook, and I go into email accounts, there we can see that I've got my normal pop mail. This is the sort of mail that I configure. Now most pop mail accounts are part of some sort of transaction like web hosting or signing up with an internet service provider or having an email account that's assigned to you by your work. Web mail, completely different story. For most of us, web mail is for personal use. So we have Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo Mail. These are all web mail accounts and they're mostly free. And I say mostly, because you usually get some sort of advertising in return for no charge to you. Or in some cases, you can upgrade to a paid service that's commercial free and sometimes has some additional capabilities. But you don't use local software to access webmail. Instead, you use your web browser. But now is where it gets a bit confusing because new email clients will allow you to manage your webmail and most Popmail accounts can also be accessed by a web interface as well as by the regular email client. Now they do all of this for convenience so that we can use our email anywhere, anytime. But what they make up for in convenience, they lose in confusion. A major advantage of web-based email over application-based email is user has access to their inbox from any internet connected computer. It doesn't have to be their main computer. However, the need for internet access is also a setback because you can't access your old messages or work on new messages when you're not connected to the internet. However, you can change that if you want as well by using newer email applications like Windows Live Mail. Let me show you how it all kind of fits together. Here I have Outlook, which is my pop email account and contact manager. And I also have open my Gmail account, which is a web mail account. Now we use the web mail account when we're traveling, when it's not convenient for us to use our pop account. But now we have two different inboxes that we need to kind of coordinate. Let me show you some of the different ways that you can coordinate them. So I've got a good example. When I travel, the way that my pop mail is set up, sometimes when I'm in a hotel, I can send and receive email through Outlook using my regular Dottotech account. But other times it gets blocked for a variety of different reasons. And I don't really want to try and overcome that each and every time. So instead of that, when I travel, I use my Gmail account. And let me go over here, here's my Gmail account. I also use this for some personal work. But now what happens if I send an email to you in my Gmail account when I'm on the road, and then you send it back to me, and I don't check my Gmail account for a while because I'm back in Outlook when I'm back in the office. What I did is I set it up to forward all of my Gmail account to Outlook so that I see it all the time anyways. And I did that by going into the settings, browsing through, and all webmail accounts are gonna have something similar, and I've looked through my different settings and I found forwarding and pop and IMAP, which allowed me to basically set up a rule that said anytime an email comes into this account, I wanna send a copy, I wanna keep a copy here in Gmail, but I wanna forward a copy to Outlook. Now. I had another organizational thing to do in Outlook because when I go into Outlook, I want to know what mail is coming from Gmail and what mail is coming from my regular account without having to open each one and decipher it. So I do that by flagging it in different colors. This gives me a tremendous advantage as far as organizationally is concerned because I can see instantly what's coming from Gmail and what's coming from my regular mail. Regular mail is blue, Gmail is coming from red. How did I set that up? I set up something called a rule. And all it takes to do any of this stuff is to learn a little bit about the applications that we're working with. I went and I said rules and alerts, and within the rules and alerts we can set up new rules. And here's the rule about my Gmail account coming in. 
and I'll just go change rule and edit the rule settings so you can see. You basically select in a wizard from a list of different things. Anytime that email comes from this particular person, which is my Gmail account, then I want you to flag it with this particular color, which if we look down here is red. And it's that easy to start to set up rules, which will give you more structure to your information flow and hopefully make you more efficient. Now there's no hard and fast rules for finding any paths to productivity. If you spend a little time exploring the tools and options within the applications and services we use, you're going to be able to come up with a system of your own, one that works for you. Want more information on the products we've covered on today's show? Then check out our new website. We've got podcasts, streaming video, and a searchable database going all the way back to our first season. Check it out at dottotech.com.